everybody. What's going on? It's your girl, Carolise. Think of me as your business analyst coach. And today we're going to be talking about another exciting topic. I told y'all, the year I started off in fine style because you're seeing more of me and I'm giving you answers to questions that you've been wanting to know, right? So we're off to a good start and we're going to keep going, right? So today we're talking about um, what does a business analyst actually do? What do you do as a business analyst? That's what we're going to be talking about. Don't go anywhere. I have this word from the sponsors and then I'll be right back. Today's video is brought to you by Panic Away. Panic Away is a system for people suffering from anxiety disorders. So if you suffer from any type of general anxiety or panic attack, this could really affect your ability to perform at work, especially in our jobs as business analysts. So anxiety can really, really affect you. So if you're struggling with that, I want to introduce you to Panic Away, which is a system that's going to help you to get over your anxiety. And by doing that, you're also supporting the work I'm doing here on YouTube, and I do get a a benefit from this so come here I'm gonna put the link in the description below and you can come check it out to make sure that you can get the help you need for your anxiety and panic attacks all right so what does a business analyst do every day well we work <laughs> surprise surprise we work no but seriously what does a business analyst do you know one of the main things that a business analyst does is to manage requirements. I mean, you know this, right? So the, one of the main tasks that you are tasked with when you get employed into this field is to manage requirements. When I say manage, I mean everything to do with requirements. So you're eliciting requirements, you are um, documenting requirements, you're defining requirements. You know, you're doing everything around the requirements management. And if you look at the Babak, it tells you a lot about how that's done, gives you all the techniques and all that stuff. I'm not going to go into all of that right now because I've done several videos on that. So if you want to know more about listing requirements, please go check out my video. Um, maybe I'll put it right here on how to elicit requirements. Okay, so go get that and that will give you much more detail than this video is going to go into. But generally, what you're doing is you are managing requirements that's one of the first things that you do as a business analyst so you're the one who is asking all the probing questions you're the one digging down into your documents you're the one observing all the different techniques that you can use to understand the requirements and again you're not really just um trying to quickly come up with a solution, but you're really trying to uncover the root causes. You're really trying to understand the jobs to be done. You're understanding what is the person trying to do. And you're always looking at people, right? You try to understand people and their motivations. It's almost like a psychology, right? What are they really trying to do? Why, 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 why? The five whys, right? So you're, you're going to be conducting a lot of interviews. You're going to be doing a lot of research because you have to understand the, the, the market, the questions they're trying to answer. You have to understand the whole thing in order to conceptualize solutions, right? So there's a lot of research that a business analyst is doing. Um, the other thing that's number one, the other thing that you're doing as a business analyst is that you're articulating change. You are articulating change. What does that mean? That means that once you've done your eliciting and your, your analysis and you're doing your modeling and all this stuff to understand the world, and you may have defined or come up with a future state from the problem that you've uncovered, now you need to be able to communicate that. So your communication is going to be super important as a business analyst. And that's what I mean by articulating change, I mean that you're changing from this current state to this future state. Well, you can't just change by yourself. You need to talk to the teams. You need to talk to you know, the managers. You need to make sure everybody's on board before this change can happen because it's going to affect everybody, right? Everybody uh, in the department that's directly being affected, but also it could affect your customers. It could affect different departments. So you have to make sure everybody knows about this change and that you get buy-in about the change. So you're articulating this change. How do you articulate change? You're having walkthroughs with your development team to say, okay, we want to change. Let's say this is a software system that you're, you're, you're changing. We want to change the system. We want to do this thing. You know, here are some mock-ups of how the new system's going to look. And here's the rationale behind it. This is why we're doing it this way. And then you're going to listen 
to the feedback that you get when you articulate your change and maybe you have to do another round. Maybe you have to go and change something yourself. Maybe you have to rethink what you thought was a good solution. Maybe you have to talk to some more people and figure out if this is really uh, the best thing. Maybe the development team is going to tell you that they can technically do this because of the constraint of the technology. Maybe there's some technical debt, whatever. There might be things that you will hear when you articulate your change that causes even more change, right? So you have to go and rethink what you, you thought was a good solution. So it's this iterative process of refining and refining and refining until you get to the right thing. And once you're able to articulate that, even at the different levels, you're going to also get the buy-in. You're going to get the buy-in from the different teams. So the development team have to say, yes, we can technically do this, for example, in the IT project. And if it's like a process, then the you know the team that's handling operations or whoever is going to be implementing this process can say, yes, this is something that we can do feasibility-wise, time-wise, all that sort of stuff. Once they agree on that, you might have to talk to your managers. You might have to present it back to your project manager, your product owner, your uh, product manager. And say this is what the team agreed on you know now from a uh, a product management or project management perspective can you finance it is there a budget that you need is there different things that might impact it so they have to take that to a different level now so you can you can now articulate that change to them and they may have to articulate that to the executive team who might say you know this is not a part of our strategic roadmap or it's not a part of our initiative for the year who knows but you have to be the nucleus you're the nucleus that's what you're doing you are the source of um you are the nucleus right that's what you're doing you are the source like you are the one in the middle keeping everything together you know making sure that all the pieces come together and you are articulating the change as they come from the top above you as they come from you know other people maybe a little bit below you or even at the same level as you so you have to be that one to articulate so you're communicating a lot you're communicating by your powerpoints you're communicating by your emails you're having discussions and meetings you're having brainstorming sessions you're doing ideation sessions you're doing all of that stuff and this is not to scare you to say, okay, whoa, this is, sounds like a big thing. No, I'm just giving you the gamut of what you're likely to be doing, right? And But when you're doing it, it doesn't feel that way. It doesn't feel like this is a big pressure because it's just you do this and then the next logical step is to do that, the next logical step is to do that, and so you keep going on. For example, when I start a new project, I first need to understand what the purpose of the project is, you know, why we're doing it. You know, you might not need to talk to the people who are, who are doing something a different way today, understand what they're doing, why they do what they do, all the different nuances of it, and then sit back and say, okay, how could we improve this? This is the problems I uncovered. And sometimes you have discussions with your team just to clarify the problem. So when that part is done, then I move on to, okay, let's come together with a different set of team and let's think through what could we do to solve this particular thing? And then we solve this, or we come up with some ideas for this. Let's think through something else for this other problem, and we think through that. So I'm saying it to you now, and it sounds like it's a whole lot of stuff, but it's progressing, right? It kind of progresses. And after a while doing it, you kind of know the natural step. So it's not, it's not that bad. It's OK. The other thing that you do as a business analyst, so we talked about uh, managing requirements. We talked about articulating the change. We also have to talk about documenting. So business analysts write a lot of documents, right? We're very righty, righty people. <laughs> we document a lot of things. We document the current state. We document the future state. We document the models. We document even to-do lists, you know, even just like a project plan. We, we document a lot of things because some of the projects we work on is so complicated and convoluted and whatever. And you know, personally, I can't remember things. I'm going to admit this to you. Like, I don't remember a lot of things because it's like with modern technology, you, you don't need to remember it's on your phone, it's on some app somewhere, so you don't really have to retain much stuff. So I've gotten, my brain has become very, I think when I get older, I'm probably going to lose my memory, which I fear. Oh my God, I don't want to forget my daughter. Uh, but <laughs> that's just my personal fear. That's the only thing I fear, not remembering stuff. But I can't retain a lot of things that I could when I was younger. I, when I was younger, I could remember everybody in my family's phone number and everything like that. And I could call them without even checking my, my address book because we used the address book back in the day, okay? So <laughs> I don't want to give away my age here, but 
We use a dress book. And I could, re I could remember everybody's number in my family. And it was easy because I'm good at numbers. But of late, I just find that, you know, I can't remember if, if I had a task to do. If I don't write it down, I don't remember it. So <laughs> so we document a lot because we have to keep up, keep up with a lot of things, right? So you're going to be, as a business analyst, you are managing requirements. You are articulating change. You're documenting. There's a lot of documentation going on. And I'm going to have a video on the artifacts that a business analyst produces. And I'll put that out soon. The other thing that you're doing after you document and you, you know, obviously talk about it, which is a part of the articulation, but you're also supporting. So you're supporting the change. So once you've had whatever you've built, implemented, and you've launched whatever new process and everything is good, it's not over. <laughs> you have to support it because you designed it, you came up with it, you know the most about it because you came up with it. Uh, or your team did and so you're a part of the team that's going to support it so when it breaks so when there's a change in something or when there's a complaint about something you have to support it and this support could be from a technical perspective an it project you could be once you've launched your new application for example um you you'll be a part of the, the the marketing launches maybe you're the person that talks about it you know or maybe you're doing the training for the new staff and how to use it or it could be months after it's already out there that you may have a question that you have to answer because you're the only person that might know as much about it so things like that add support um it's not as heavy at the support when you reach the support level because it's already out there it's already done um but you're still always going to be called on whenever you need to answer questions or even talk about it with a different group maybe there is training um for internal training for, for staff um like onboarding and stuff like that you have to support so those are the things that your business analyst does. I mean, there's other things too that I could tell you. Like you do a lot of crap as a business analyst. Yes, I'm gonna say that word again. We did you deal with a lot of crap. <laughs> so there are other things that you deal with as a business analyst, and it's not always pleasant. You know, it's not a bed of roses. You deal with a lot of um uh yeah, crap. So <laughs> There is office politics to deal with, and this happens in every company. But because the business analyst has to interface with so many different levels and so many different departments, you might just have an extra, extra share <laughs> for you. And I have a video I talked about how to deal with difficult stakeholders uh, here. So you can go check out that video about difficult stakeholders. But yeah, you deal with a lot of crap because some people have their personality and you don't have to deal with them in different department and they want to you know why are you come and ask me a bunch of questions and all that stuff. So you deal with that. You deal with office politics a lot. Um, you deal with co-workers issues. I mean, these are things that happen to every company. So it's not like it's unique to business analysts. It's just that we go through different departments so we kind of get a taste <laughs> of all of it. But you also deal with great people too. You have great people who you wouldn't otherwise have a reason to talk to, and now you do. And so you develop good relationships and good friendships and good work ethics, and, and people help you with things, and you help them with things, and you have good rapport, right? So it's not all bad, but I'm just telling you the gamut of what we deal with. So if you wanted to know what a business analyst does from a high level, this is what it is. Obviously, there's more details you can get into, like the exact type of tasks. You know, if you really want to know like from a day-to-day -day perspective, you can watch my video on the day in the life of a business analyst, which is right here. So go check that out, where you walk with me for a day um, in what I do there. So that's what it is, guys. Again, if you need some more help, please check out my free courses on my website. It's all free. Just go to carolise.com, go to free courses. And it's the videos that I have here on YouTube, but they're organized by topic. And it helps you from not having to jump around and figure out which video to watch next, right? To get the full teaching. You, everything is there for you, already organized for you. Just go there, watch the videos, get the training that's free, and learn something and be able to apply it in your job, right? I want the best for you. I do. This is 2021, and I'm sending you a lot of success. Those of you that are looking for a job in this space, you're going to get it. You are going to get it, okay? You just have to set your mind towards it. We can we can do all things. We can do all things, right? So let's just set our mind on positive things and think positively. We can do it. And those of you already working as business analysts and you're struggling with something, it's going to work out. It is. It's going to work out. It's going to be good, all right? 
so uh, this is it for today this is today's video and I hope you enjoy please subscribe and check out the sponsors of this video which is also in the description below right subscribe leave a comment let the video get you know get likes and stuff so it can go to other people like that's how you support me too right so let's do that and I will see you guys next time take care